Hello, everybody. Good evening and welcome to Celebrate Southern Africa. My name is Dawn Denton, and this evening on the Virtual African Market, we have a fantastic business. Now, I met Rochelle Jeepers. How long ago did we connect? Six years ago. Six years ago, um, Rochelle came to the Celebrate Southern African Market in Somerset, and she has the most fantastic business. So welcome, Rochelle. And you're in Southwest London now, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. Rains Park. Yeah. Rain. I used to play netball around the corner from you. Um, and Courtney, who is the office manager, the marketing manager, the everything manager. Um, I now. Mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, joining us from Joburg. Thank you so much for joining us. It's lovely to have you. And I you. am excited to talk about your business. Now, you need to tell me the name of your business and where it comes from. Okay, um, Courtney might have to jump in there as well. <laughs> um, Totes of Peg and Lime is basically an Indian word influenced by the British from the 1600s. Um, I always say Babylonian, but it's not right. Um, whatever it was the war but I always say Babylonian wars not Babylonian war it's colonial my... wars maybe <laughs> thank you yeah <laughs> that's yeah oh yeah um yeah so um basically the word ch chata um is is a measurement of so chata peg um back in back in the 1600s is a measurement normally relating to whiskey or gin um and it's a single shot so chata peg is when you go to the bar and ask um, for a single shot of gin or a single shot of whiskey, they would say Chatterpig. And then the line came, the end of the word of the name came from the same sort of concept, um, but they use lime for scurvy and also to help change, uh, change the bitterness of the drink. So they used to add lime into their drinks and that's where it came from. So... Yeah. So how did you find this name? Like, I mean, it's not like it's a word that you read a lot or pull across. You know, I um, I had a whole bunch of girlfriends over one day to brainstorm um, about how what I'm going to name this business. So the concept came because I used to run a mobile bar company in South Africa. So that's why I got the confidence and the knowledge to know how to run the mobile bar company. Um and I considered using the same name as the company back in South Africa. And, and we came up with a whole list and we broke it down to about two. And then there's this amazing lady called Zoe who used to, um, is one of my really good friends and works for Billabong and helps with the Billabong branding and stuff like that. So uh, she was going to create my logo and my branding once I had decided on a name. And then I gave her my two names and she didn't choose any of them and then she <laughs> came up with the name <laughs> oh even... fantastic yeah so, so, so the the brain didn't actually even work yeah well we had prosecco and nice brunch at my house so it was a good fun day nevertheless so okay <laughs> <laughs> so Courtney tell us what the business does um, at the moment, uh, we, well, the business is a little bit quiet due to the COVID, you know, the restrictions, especially that side. So that's opened up um, where I know the UK is still fairly locked down, but um, on a normal day, it would be mobile, it would be a mobile VAR, which would be for weddings, corporate events, any type of event where you need to serve alcohol and have a good time. Chata Peg is definitely the business to go for. So and yeah, I, that's I, the thing is, I've seen that stunning bar. It is just beautiful. And, you know, it's so adaptable because you can have it really elegant at a wedding, but then you could also have it at a festival if you need. It's just so adaptable and it's so brilliant. I absolutely love it. But of course, of course, mm -hmm. something we've had to deal with this year. What have you guys done? We haven't been able to run a business. So, Rochelle, what are you guys busy doing now? Oh, so at the moment, um, we have just launched one of many boxes to come. Uh, we started with a gin masterclass kit. Um, I was looking, yeah, honestly, I was like, what can I do? Because 
the business is obviously not trading because of what, everything that's happening, but we can't just let it sit there. So like any other business, I started stalking my competitors and what are they doing. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I wasn't quite happy with the concepts that other people were doing and I didn't want to sort of just follow the trend. I wanted, I, I always want to be different. I always want to stick out anyway. So um, I started looking at my personality what do I do what do I like why do I want to be in business and I love to bring people together um, um I, I love bringing con um skill sets from people and I love to support people and I was like what can I do that mine's different so we're Courtney and I have been working really really hard to create this gin masterclass kit with an a secret instagram page with the tutorial of how to make these four gins and we also then created this box that is recyclable and upcyclable so we my opinion is that a lot of these master classes are in a cardboard box and it's like as if you go into tesco's and thrown it in this cardboard box and post it all and we didn't want to do that so we made everything in that box reusable and recyclable and upcyclable so the tin box itself it's got um, a straw a reusable straw made out of bamboo and it's got oh Courtney I can't remember it's got um like it, it's got the, the recipes for all four cocktails and it's also got on the recipes ideas of how to upcycle everything in that box the box itself the bottle from the gin the tin from um the fever tree tonic water and everything else all the little bags where the botanical comes in the little test tube where the cinnamon stick comes in there's a whole bunch of ideas of so the idea people. the idea of the gym has been to get people together and to have fun making is it cocktails gin cocktails yeah. mm. oh yeah. how exciting and how many people so you just obviously so they all that what's in a kit is how to make it but you get your own ingredients or is the gin included? Included. Everything you need on the night. The only thing you need to buy is ice. That's it. Everything else is in the tin. Fantastic. What a great idea. And so now you, people can buy the website and they can buy it. Um, how, how can they get, how can they get hold of them? Uh, yeah, uh, so, yeah. You actually sell that one, Courtney. <laughs> Um, so at the moment, so the whole idea and the concept behind the gin boxes was definitely to create an immersive experience for everyone, you know, something that they could really, people could come together, but also that it's a, a completely um, immersive and, you know, exploratory experience where you don't just drink a gin, you make it and it's your own, you're your own mixologist and you're your own master of the gins. And currently you can go onto our Facebook and then the, there's links that will take you there and then onto our website as well. But there will be a, a, quite a few more avenues as we branch out and open up, definitely. So now how did you, how did you get involved then in, with three friends and things, but why specifically did you want to work um, with Chocolate Time, Courtney? Um, I firstly love drinking. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also, um, I love the brand. I love the concept. I love, look, Rochelle is an awesome um, leader and manager and um, boss. She's great to work with. And the, her whole concept, I enjoyed the whole thing of, it's so innovative, you know, to take the bar, the, the whole concept of Charter Peg and Lime is to take the bar wherever you are. And um, I feel like that's so innovative and that's where the world is moving towards. You know, you don't have to go to a, a bricks and mortar place anymore. You know, um, it's like Skype or things like that. You know, it brings people together in maybe a place that they wouldn't necessarily be at. And but, um, yeah, what are, the then what, are the, what are the challenges then of working from, and your boss is sitting here in the UK there must be some positives because you can tell you can, oh I've got a bad internet connection if she really gets very annoying but <laughs> what kind of, what could you <laughs> that happened, what that happened. Happened. <laughs> oh damn I've given it away um challenges of, re of working remotely because you know I think with the new um the new system 
new world, I think we might be doing more of this and it'd be great to hear you've been doing it for a while. Um, the challenges, okay, so firstly, I'm two hours ahead. So I'm, it's now half past 10 at night. So whereas maybe a um, couple of months ago, I would have started winding down, I now wind up and, you know, we get together and we can brainstorm and chat. And this is really our hours to, to make magic. Um, uh, so that's, a, that's, it's not really a challenge. I'm only 25. So if that was a challenge now, then I'd hate to know me at 45. <laughs> um, but you'd look like, you'd look like me. <laughs> Um, I think, I think maybe sometimes, um, in communication that becomes a little bit of a challenge if it's not completely explained and black and white and we have, we, but you know what, um, Rushan and I, you know, as South Africans, I think, um, as a country, as a nation, as people with this background, we're highly adaptable people, which is why I think also Rochelle looks for South African people to connect with and work with, um, because, you know, it doesn't matter that I'm how many kilometers away and what the what the time difference is um i'm there i can make a plan um, i'm always ready to learn something and um and to help out however i can and i think we all like that you know that's what you know it makes a person proud to be somewhat part of this country you know because absolutely change and you know pop up in london or the uk and still make it i mean look what rochelle's done she's got how many businesses and she's thriving and that's quite inspiring as well yeah, well, it's lovely that that she, um, you know has been able to connect with you, and also that you can start exploring um, this world of entrepreneurship when you're still very young. Because I think it is yeah. the future, and I think um, Africa is going to be the place where it's just going to explode. Entrepreneurial concepts, technology. I know, Rochelle, you're not a big fan of technology, but what you've got, Courtney. <laughs> yeah. So, Rochelle, yeah. tell us tell us about um, how. And why you wanted to run the business because you wanted to bring people together and you did do a mobile bar in South Africa, but my goodness, it's a big step to start a business when you immigrate. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so why I wanted to do it, I think to see, well, the trade to peg itself, initially when I started about five years or so ago, I wanted, I did it to see if I could do it. Um, and yeah and I did it while working full-time and then um, I chose redundancy because I would planned to start this business for two years and then redundancy was an option so I took that opportunity to use that money and say okay cool this time to invest in myself and see what happens um, so initially I cho chose to fake started just to see if I could do it and then uh, now these gin boxes um the, this is different. I, I wanted to, I didn't want Church of Peg to fail because of COVID. I, 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 I couldn't allow that to happen. And then I was like, what, what, what can I do? What's my personality? What do I enjoy doing? And that's just to bring people together, skill sets together and create something awesome. And then now I'm doing that, but I want to support and back different small brands like myself. Um, so that's why I partnered with the gin lady I partnered with because I have watched this woman for about six years, five or six years. I lived down the road from where she started her gin distillery. Um, she had a dog. I had a dog and they would play when we walked past each other because it's, it's an Abbey Mills, um, which is in Collier's Wood. Um, and she's got her little distillery there. And then over the years, I've seen her brand grow. She's had two children and I've just watched and admired her. And I was like, uh, one day I want to work with this woman. I don't know how. And now that's why I chose her. And um, yeah, I just want to support other, other little brands and, and see how we can help and grow each other. And now I'm in talks with a whiskey company in Scotland and talks with a, um, a vodka company that Fever Tree introduced me to. Uh, there's another company, who else? There's a, another gin company. There's um, a, a lovely straw company called Strudel. So I've reached out to them and told them, you and I have to do business together because Strudel is my um, my nickname from school because my surname's Strew. So we have to work together. So he <laughs> left me today. 
laughing at my story and he said yeah I think because your name is Strudel and I've got your name as my business we have to work together so oh. yeah so it's just yeah that's where we... you know what do you know what though I I think one of the things that you've always um what I've admired about you is that you have been one of those people who've taken the bull by the horns and just got on with it but also you're very supportive and you love to bring other people in. I know a lot of people are very scared of their, their business. They don't want to tell too many people and they don't want to, because someone might take their idea and someone, and, and they're very scared, but you are, you know, you are so open about what you do. That's why you're going to be successful, you know, because when people close things in together and they, they keep themselves to themselves, it never flourishes because the, the universe needs it to be out there need the universe and you need all the people in it to make mm. your business a success and that's what I absolutely love what you do because that's who you are you're naturally like that um, and that's why I think you'll be successful now what are your future what are your future plans Courtney for this business are you going to shake it up a bit um with Rochelle and I our minds together we could go very far <laughs> we're always coming up with new ideas you know sometimes we actually have to rein ourselves in because we'll go on such a tangent with new ideas and new plans that we're like oh wait we need to figure out the one that we're actually thinking about <laughs> now um so yeah but I just take my cue from Rochelle she's been such an amazing mentor as well she you know She's, she's the brain box behind like all of the ideas and it's been awesome just like supporting her in this journey. So, but I think definitely she's got big plans. So the world better watch out for Chata Bang and Lime, definitely. Fantastic. <laughs> so um, tell us, is it nice and warm in Joburg today? No, it's lacquer. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's actually so warm that I had to take off my jeans and put a dress on. So it's one of those days, yeah. So sorry about that. I mean their door no. what's that <laughs> i think we have technical difficulties with courtney <laughs> yeah sorry what did she say i've just that's lost her that's amazing <laughs> she's just dropped right off the call <laughs> no no it's, it's uh the weather's great here yeah. um this is the best time of year so yeah hopefully hopefully you know nothing gets shut down we can still go to the beaches and hang out and have new years except for one little province well, one or two little provinces so let's hope they don't shut down the whole country yeah sorry for yeah. you guys i don't mean to like <laughs> rain on your parade. <laughs> so rochelle those big plans courtney talks about what are your plans that you'd like to share with us um and uh tell us where you'd like to go with your business um i think i love the concept of take the bar where you are um and these sort of master class boxes uh, carries that and um, gets our name out there and like you said supports other little businesses and networking and um, yeah so I think we're going to continue with these boxes launch launch the gin boxes and then next year we'll start all the other kits um, I am looking for a wine company to to partner with so I've yet to find one so to make mold wine kits and things like that so yeah I think we're going to try and continue with these different masterclass kits but the the concepts of upcycle recycle needs to stay there um, and then everything inside the box can be used from other local brands um, so it's made up of you know smaller local businesses and events are you still interested in doing those events are they still going to continue when you yeah. can yeah so funny enough um i had a, an amazing instagram message the other day from this really good hog roast company that i met as well roughly maybe about a year after yourself um at a wedding fair and their brand is so good their company is so good they've got lots of corporate clients they're always so busy and there's two guys in this company and i met the one the one uh, set up and left so the one I made good friends with and he said oh you know I must take your details maybe we could work together at events and stuff so I had sent off my details and then the other guy came back so sorry no we work with mobile bar company already I was like okay it's no worries he messaged me saying that their company this company they work with unfortunately is closed down but he's always actually admired my Instagram and my website and he's been following me and he loves what I do and he asked if I can now partner with him. 
and it's a company that I've also been admiring and following on Instagram and like in awe of the work they do. So yeah, so it's already looking up for when the world goes back to normal. Fantastic. Now your Instagram is just, do you take all your photos for your Instagram account? Mm-hmm. Do you take <laughs> some? <laughs> are brilliant and I love I love your feed so um if if you're watching and you want to find out more about what Chotter Peg and Lime does go to Chotter Peg and Lime on Instagram they are brilliant um and tell us a bit more about where people can find you and where on your website they can find these gin experiences gin box experiences so the web just so you know uh, the website still needs updating our web developer so rudely took a holiday. How rude. Oh. I say. <laughs> <laughs> so people just met you directly on Instagram, then they can make yeah. a plan. Yeah, or they can go onto the website. There is a tab which is gin boxes, and they can go on there. But if um, they're finding it diff- difficult, then just send me an email or like a Facebook message or Instagram message. Um, you can make a line or... You can message me directly. And if you're local, I can deliver. Yeah. So, Okay. And we're going to see you in the UK, Courtney. Um, yeah. As soon as Rochelle gets me there. <laughs> Come on. This, this boss. I mean, seriously. Why do you want <laughs> no, to? I don't know. <laughs> no, I definitely can. <laughs> Sign I definitely an expense. <laughs> No, I'm definitely planning a trip, um, hopefully next year, to get there and come visit, um, just uh, visiting and, and seeing what's out there, yeah. Definitely. And also connecting with all the suppliers, but also going coming on some of the events, see how they all, yes, you know, yes. are run. And meeting um, Rochelle in the flesh. <laughs> yeah. Imagine that. Wow, that would be amazing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, well, it's been an absolute to chat to you and I love the story of your business name I think it's fantastic and Courtney um, we managed to get through this without load shedding it's fantastic no. that's a real positive <laughs> <laughs> and I really look forward to um, seeing your business just grow from to strength and it's been a real pleasure to chat so thank you very much to both of you for joining me yeah thank, thank you Dawn thank you very okay. much.